Right here we have the brand new Hasselblad X2D. Not the X1D2, which was the last one. This is completely brand new. Yeah, well, it looks the same. Same kind of uh, all-in-one block aluminium. Look at that, it's a, it's a tasty bit of kit, isn't it? It's the most gorgeous thing ever. They've changed it a little bit. Before they had a little mode dial here, now you've got a uh, kind of a small screen. Out on H. But yeah, same mono block aluminium made in Sweden. I like the battery here. I like the battery. Yeah, that's that, cool. That that leave me the biggest impression of the <laughs> camera. That's, that's one of the best things about it. But I think Leica did, did something like that, didn't they? Yeah. But yeah. um do, 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 do it again, do it again. You just Oh. Oh, see, it doesn't drop. It didn't doesn't drop. Push it up and then drops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone still managed to drop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I've scratched it. Oh, it still looks nice after yeah. scratch it because it's, it's um, full metal. Yeah, exactly. It's, it gives it a bit of character, doesn't it? How am I going to explain that now? So, um, yeah, enough of the battery. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about the camera. So it's a big monoblock. Um, exactly. Let's try not to drop anything else. So it uses CF Express. Yeah, it's not much to it, really. Flaps. There's two two flaps. They could have put all of it under one flap, but uh, yeah, USB-C. No HDMI out. It's not that kind of camera, really. It's all about stills. And for stills, 100 megapixels, which is not bad. They've improved it a lot. I'm going to talk about the monoblock before they didn't have this. Oh, it's a tilty, flippy screen. What? Innovation. Brand new, brand new innovation from Sweden. So it tilts at two separate angles. It do look nice. The thin look thinner than a lot of. It's quite thin and, and it's quite nicely finished on the back as well. Because some screens at the back, it's like, oh, you can feel like uh, cables and stuff. <laughs> cable. But uh, well, it's a bit sharp. Also, we've got some buttons come through. Yeah, the uh, buttons are actually on the screen. When you, when you flip it. Yeah. So you can break for it for. Yeah. The screen is huge as well. Like a Look how much everything's even the numbers, the, the information is bigger. Yeah. Like the big numbers. And it's not too heavy. It's quite a good weight for well it's mirrorless. And considering it's all metal, it's a nice weight. I would say it compares to probably a 5D Mark III. So as I showed the CF Express, but they've also got uh, internal storage. One terabyte <laughs> for built-in storage, which is quite, you know, I think that should be plenty. I mean, 100 megapixels will be quite big files, but one terabyte should offer you at least a good day or two of, of shooting, <laughs> isn't it? But they, they charge you, it's not cheap, but at least they give you like one terabyte. Yeah. Internal storage. So it does, it's going to cost you. But you kind of get. At least they, yeah, at least they put in something. Yeah. But yeah, the viewfinder is 5.7 million dots. Mm -hmm. It's massive. Oh, it's got that. Look at the size of that. Whoa, it's not like some other people claim large format. I mean, our previous <laughs> digital rev colleague would say you can, you can just see how good it is just by looking at a sensor. Brand new lenses, by the way. It has this pretty. I believe it's still focused by wire. Look at the markings, like old manual lenses. I mean, somebody's going to go and say, oh, Olympus did that ages ago. And then somebody will say, oh, Pentax did that before. <laughs> or Tamron or something. But this is, I mean, I've had a little play of it. It feels like a much quicker focusing camera. Before, I think, mean, a lot of medium format cameras, medium-ish format cameras, are not that quick. This one is very quick to focus. Oh, it's on manual focus a minute. Not sure about the beep noise. Much faster than some of the early mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can see it, but... Bum, bum. Well, you can see, you, you, you have pressed the bum. Yeah. It's quite almost... Uh, in previously, it's like, you press it and then... 
So yeah, we've got the new 55. There's also a 35 as well. Also inside, they put image stabilization on. Oh wow, yeah. It made, I mean, the sensor shift? I, yeah. Wow. I mean, that's quite something for, I don't know if, it might even be the first. No, Fujifilm, well, it's not medium format, as mm. we would say. What they call large format. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> And the colours do look really good. These are 16-bit colour. So you get like, it's like trillion, is it 200 trillion different shades of colour or something like that? I'll have to check. I mean, what do you get with 16-bit? It's just better than 8-bit. It's better. All right. 200, 281 trillion colours are represented. Well, basically means that your eye can't see so many colour. It for post, I mean, it's for retouch. 15 stops of dynamic range. It's not really going to convince a lot of people who are shooting full frame to switch to this instantly. This is still going to be a bit of niche isn't it? But once, for, for people who need to make images with that extra bit of richness, you're going to appreciate it. Of course, this is going to be used a lot for things like landscapes, a lot of uh, things that need the resolution, the details. I think this would be great for street photography. So we've come out on the street because you can only take so many photos of Locke and either get bored or realize that it's not really good to test out how good a camera is. So we've got Hasselblad X2D out here in the wild. Well, you know, when you think of Hasselblads, what do you think? You think landscapes, studios, and when you look at the old uh, uh, medium format cameras from Hasselblad, the digital medium format cameras, a little bit slow. This one, it does feel faster, but is it fast enough for this kind of stuff? Things moving, unpredictably moving around. Well, it might help if we switch on first. And I think I need to put a strap on after battery well, gate. You need one for the battery. <laughs> need a neck strap just for the battery. I've got the 38 millimeter on, which is slightly wide. As I showed you before, it's got the pushy back. Push back, no, push forward for manual focus. So it does stop. It doesn't, it doesn't go all the way around because it has got a scale focusing. Love it. It's very nice. It's a nice touch. So the thing about the lenses that they have the shutters within them, leaf shutter, there's no shutter in camera. So if you want to use, if you want to adapt other lenses to this, you might need to use electronic shutter. You will need to. Because Hasselblad have a X-Pan adapter, so you can put your X-Pan lenses on this, but you need to use electronic shutter. Because I never thought about using other lenses on. Yeah. I mean, some, some of these medium format people, or digital medium format people, they try to use some full frame lenses, 35 millimeter full frame lenses. Actually, look, this is pretty cool. Don't know what the hell is going on. It's got some circles. Is that? No, that's not to do. Is it? Hang on. Is that a level? Yeah, I think so. It's just very sensitive. Oh, well, yes. It's like a, if you get bored, you can just play this game. Oh, well, yeah, I've got a medal. Where do you want? Or just buy a spirit level. <laughs> yeah. Much cheaper. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've got two. Oh, Yes. Pull up. Maverick. But very sensitive. That means it, it shows you really small angle of differences. Yeah. So we make it's it very precise. Very precise. You're wrong. And when you have something like this, and you're taking something like landscape, you want to be, you're going to be so uber picky when you have this. You'll be like, oh no, it's slightly off. But it's got touch. It's got a nice touch screen interface as well which might actually be easier to use because this is this, this hard candy, but it's very minimalistic in design. So you can just do everything on the touch screen there. I mean, I don't know if it's the bigger screen and also the touch, great, the touch screen interface and also the, the graphics. It, it just, it's really one of the most easy menu systems to use. Whoa, that's a big truck. Oh, <laughs> that's... Oh, no, coming, to us. coming to us, coming to us. 
that's a bit that's a bit rubbish. What do these buttons mean? Well, X that must mean cancel. What's the circle? Oh, that brings up the display options. And then there's a triangle and. Uh... What does that mean? Oh no! What's a triangle? Oh, of course it's play, isn't it? Initial focusing on random subjects feels good. Feels much quicker than any blad that has come before. The beep is kind of like. I don't know. You don't expect it from a from a medium format camera. You expect something really professional sounding. It's like this. Boop. Boop. You expect that on, a, on a, like a Japanese phone or something. The AF confirmation beep sounds cute. Built of 294 phase detect AF zones covering that massive frame, which can be touch operated, the focusing system doesn't sound merely cute. What romantic. What a fantastic date that is. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to be on my scooter. I'm going to be on my scooter and you can walk, <laughs> lady. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> we have just, this Kingston, so we've instantly been magnetised to this, this area of town. Oh. Didn't you even realise? Yeah, didn't even realise. We're like, uh, uh, what do you call it, those? Those pigeons that just end up in a certain place. Lemming. Lemming, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that game. But this, I don't need another shot of this because I think I've got a really nice shot in another, you know, another time. Yep, this one shot using a full frame mirrorless, but I just want to test out what the X2D is like to focus on legs appearing in frame suddenly. Cause that's a really popular thing to photograph, obviously. It's interesting the when you go from auto focus to manual focus, it changes from square to this. Oh look, it goes green as well. Oh, that's interesting. Focus confirmation. Well, let's let's try and get some feet underneath the boxes. Yeah. Ah, perhaps a bit too challenging for the AF then. Just need somebody to pop pop up behind there. Just the colour depth. The files are really rich. It's not, I mean, it's a bit cloudy in the minute, so everything's kind of a shade of grey. But the images that it produces have this rich tonality. Even grey days look like this. And crop in, and you'll see just how much saucy detail you can get from those 100 megapixels. Too much for street photography? Well, you can never have too much. It's just whether it can keep up with moving subjects or not. feeling that when it comes to showing the best bits about this camera it really is to do with how the image looks because there's not too many features it's just nice the way they, they made this camera it's, it's sort of like a like in in its simplicity which I like I like uh, it a lot it's not too much faffing about in menu systems but perhaps this could be the camera that makes you think mm, you know what I'm done with full frame. I need this. Because with the focusing system, at least now it's kind of, you can use it for more things other than just studio or landscapes. It's not gonna be as fast as some mirrorless cameras when it comes to focusing. No, but <laughs> faster. Utilization, let me change the mode. It would help Hasselblad for their cameras to appeal to a broader spectrum of photographers than just a couple of specific niches. Bumping up the megapixel count and beefing up the body with some cool features such as the one terabyte of built-in storage are fantastic, but it really is the better autofocusing that makes it potentially a great alternative for photographers that would go for some high-end full-frame mirrorless cameras but need something a bit more. The AF, although, is still not on the par with a sports camera, but that's sort to be expected. Medium format was never for sports, but at least now it's usable for stuff that, well, moves. So, things are looking up, and if they add face detection, this could well be the camera that converts some full-frame users to the ways of medium format. 
as long as they've got a bit of cash in their pocket. By the way, this is at the end of the shoot, but the battery is out. I, uh, this first time I pick it up, I like the grip a lot. I mean, most Japanese camera would be like, it either have a really small grip or it has a large grip. But this one is big and small. I mean, it is, it is a really thin body, but then they make the grip this bit really big. So it get a really deep grip, but it's not uh, actually, it's not a fake camera. It's so thin, but then the grip is big. It's just, yeah. the whole thing is just nice. It's nice to touch all the edges, hard edges, but not sharp. I mean, they probably done quite a lot on, but like looking at photos, I expect the edges to be sharp. No, it's, it's soft. I mean, not soft, I mean, <laughs> wrong, but it, look, it looks sharp, but it's wrong. I mean, if you're going to get something like a Leica, Leicas are not that cheap, are they? If you're going to go proper luxury, if you're going to spend a bit on a nice camera, why not go for something with, something with image quality that is completely different to any other mirrorless <laughs> camera? Because arguably, a Leica sensor is going to be not too different to, you know, Sony, Canon. Unless you have the, the monochrome version that people claim yeah. it's like, oh, it's just black and white. Better. I'm sure it is, but I mean, I'm, I'm making a joke. Of course, there's a, there'll be a bit of a difference in color science, Leica to Sony and Canon, but this definitely looks more lush. The images, even just looking at the screen, just look really good especially for people shots as well it's, I don't know it's, it's just it just makes you want to look more at the people in the photos because <laughs> it just looks it looks fantastic it looks more real than real more human than human 